You may have a cinematic idea of what the U.S.-Mexico border looks like, razor wire, helicopters, and soaring fences. But tonight, as the Senate passes an immigration bill that nearly doubles the over $18 billion spent annually on border security, we travel to a remote part of Arizona where that vaunted border might just surprise you. In some places, you can walk right over it. So what's all that money buying? ABC's Byron Pitts steps into the thick of things to find out. 2 p.m., the middle of the day, U.S. Border Patrol agents spot a group of men on foot crossing from Mexico into Arizona, and the race is on. One by one, the men are detained, 11 total, some as young as 18. And this happens how often? Oh, this is a normal occurrence. This is every day. Yeah. It's a, yeah, that's why we're down here. And that's why we're here as well. Though $18.5 billion spent each year on border security has led to a decrease in the flow of border crossers and an increase in drug seizures. You can see how they modified it. They actually put wood, they cut the bottle, they glued them on there, and underneath was where the narcotics were. But that success has forced the drug cartels and the human smugglers to push their operations to the one stretch of the border where the U.S. has the fewest resources and the widest open space. Right here, the Tahono Nation, a Native American reservation the size of Connecticut. How long do you think they'll be there today? I've come to spend 48 hours with border agents and the reservation's police force. Just rocks and dirt, no shade. That's Lieutenant Mike Ford, who with the force of only a few dozen, is responsible for patrolling 4,000 square miles of desert, keeping the nearly 30,000 Native Americans here safe. The U.S. Border Patrol has beefed up its presence on the reservation, making use of the latest night vision technology. You can see a rabbit yeah, from several little, miles away. Yeah, there's a little rabbit right there. And they built this state-of-the-art command center in nearby Tucson. This is the Joint Intelligence Operations Center. All the cameras, um, all the feeds end up here. A absolutely, yes. Still, much of the border security inside the reservation is done as we discovered the old-fashioned way. It's called cutting for sign. Trained officers literally looking at the ground for footprints, tire marks, or unnatural damage to the vegetation. They're just sitting around out there. If you're out there cutting for sign, you're looking for uh, foot traffic, looking for uh, shoes. The border fence here is not what you would think. Those iconic images of sky-high walls topped with razor wire. Here, it's wide open, all but for a string of low fences and poles buried in the ground. A deterrent to vehicles crossing here, not people. Right now we're in the international border. So Mexico's over there, a few feet. I questioned the border crossers apprehended earlier. This 26-year-old, a school teacher from Guatemala, with a university degree, he says, but unable to find a job. How long have you been walking? Seven days. Seven days you've been walking. That must be hard. Scary? What happened? What have you seen? Hay ladrones. Hay gente que lo secuestra a uno. Based on all that you've been through, all that you've seen, will you try this again? No sé, la verdad no sé. He doesn't. Your, your smile says yes. <laughs> we noticed all of them were carrying the same camouflage backpacks, wearing the same camouflage shirts. A fashion statement, it's not. These shoes, when they are tracking them, right, a boot like mine would leave a footprint. These shoes, these carpet sole shoes they wear, no footprint. So they're hoping they can wear these to conceal their, their movements as they try and cross the border. But these people caught in facing detention may be the lucky ones. As smugglers and their human cargo make their way across this desolate terrain, often what catches them is Mother Nature. We're usually talking about, on average, about six bodies a week. And once you get out there and you run out of water, they got no hope of coming back. And the ones with no hope end up here, the county moor nameless casualties. If they go unclaimed, and most will, they'll be placed in unmarked graves. More than 100 bodies recovered in recent weeks, and it's just now the start of the hot summer when temperatures can exceed 120 degrees. While overall border crossings are down 43 percent from two years ago, it's a different, more complicated story on the reservation. 
when drug seizures are steadily climbing. Nearly 500,000 pounds of marijuana seized last year, a number that's nearly doubled since 2010. It's not about whether it's people or drugs, it's about the money. The money. Soon dusk falls on the reservation. Lieutenant Ford and his men suit up in SWAT gear for another long night of patrol. They've invited me to ride along. Under the cover of darkness in the cool desert air, drug and human trafficking picks up. Uh, well, I think you're chasing large amounts of narcotics. It's pretty dangerous, especially out in the middle of nowhere. The first traffic stop. They detain a woman who can't explain why she's on a federally protected Native American reservation, nor where she's going, who exactly she's come to see. Um, I came looking for a friend. Detective Elk Dreamer isn't buying. I think she was probably down here to pick up. She's making up that story. They let her go with a warning. Don't come back into the red. But it's not just smugglers who are getting stopped. There are more incidents like this one. This time, police stop a native resident, Art Wilson, for driving under the speed limit. But for Wilson, who has done nothing wrong, it feels like harassment. This is home. It's like somebody coming to your house and there's no sense of freedom. You know, that feeling invaded on your own homeland. Police find nothing and let him go. Many of the Native Americans we spoke with say their relationship with Border Patrol is complicated at best. Are they welcome in the nation? I would say yes, and I would say no. We're bringing in people who don't understand our culture, don't understand our people, don't understand our way of life. So therefore, there's resentment. Verlin Jose is a tribal leader. His family's lived on this reservation for generations. We traveled hours off the main road to reach Verlin and members of his tribe. We met at what's called the Sacred Gate, the one place Native Americans can walk across the border where their land stretches into Mexico. This low fence is all that separates our two countries, a lone border agent and a light pole powered by a generator. Drugs come through here, migrants come through here. And with it, a myriad of problems. Our homes are getting broken into, vehicles are being stolen. They seem to be getting more aggressive. Aggressive. The cartel is becoming more aggressive bringing their product through your community. The border patrol is becoming more aggressive to stop it. Yeah. And caught in the middle. We're caught in the middle of it. It sounds like your beloved nation is either the doorway or the doormat to the promised land for the drug trafficking and the human trafficking. Unfortunately, that, that is correct. Verlin's cousin, Francine Jose, lives in a remote part of the reservation. The police response time to her home, authorities tell us, can be 45 minutes. And the border crossers who walk across her property know it. And this is where they went through the home. My home, they're constantly breaking in all the time. Breaking into your home? Yes. I would say once every month. Once a month? Mm -hmm. There was one just recently where they cooked stuff about a month ago and just left everything. They broke into your house? Yeah. Stole your food and mm -hmm. cooked it on your stove? Yes. The tangible proof of the escalation of the traffic across the border in this part of Arizona, I find inside this room at police headquarters. Okay, what we have here is our processing area where we process our, uh, our drug seizures. Over a million dollars worth of marijuana confiscated in a week. They've been weighed and we're getting ready to put them into evidence. And there's more that's about to be added to the pile. Because on this night, just down the hall, a group of suspected drug smugglers were just captured, being held in these cells and then interrogated. Six of them with loads of marijuana, their clothes and carpet shoes on the floor. One is a young woman visibly upset. You can smell a little bit, but it's wrapped pretty, pretty tight, right? And this drug smuggling apprehension so fresh, the bags of marijuana are still in the back of a truck in the parking lot. What does this tell you? The fact that your folks were able to, to capture this tonight. Is this success? Is this, you know, a drop in a bucket? This is success, I mean, because it represents money. That's not how many of the Native Americans we talk to see it. Their way of life has been compromised. In the battle for the border, America may be winning, but it's a battle she cannot end, at least not yet, and not here. How do we better work this relationship? We are on the same team, and we are failing at protecting America. When they say that the borders are secure along the U.S.-Mexican border, that is not true. 
they are not secure. If you come to Don Autumn, they are not secure. For Nightline, Byron Pitts, Cells, Arizona.